upcoming Hornby session and the following <laughs> keynote as well. Uh, a couple of organizational announcements. So first of all, there is some lost and found. We've got, uh, we found a beautiful necklace. Uh, who's the owner? <laughs> no one? Okay, so we are going to that. put it uh, into the hotel's reception desk. The hotels, right? So uh, if, if you uh, then hear from someone that uh, he or she, likely she, would be missing the necklace, then uh, it's at the desk. Um, the next announcement, um, Thomas Widman's mm. talk, uh, who was yeah. unfortunately interrupted I mean, uh, when Thierry right? got so unwell, we go uh, will be to given tomorrow um, in a slot where okay. the uh, former talk will be given on Thursday. The program has been updated uh, on the website as well as in the app. So uh, those of you who uh, want to go to uh, Thomas' talk, please check in the app um, the exact time. The same applies to uh, the talk by Krzysztof Novak, who, uh, uh, which wasn't carried out for technical reason. So those of you who are interested, please uh, check the uh, program updates. Uh, everything has been updated and you will find the, uh, the right times there. And now I hand over to uh, Michael. Thanks, Milos, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, today we have three short presentations from last year's winners of the A.S. Hornby Dictionary Research Award. Um, and many thanks to the organizers for giving us this opportunity. And they're up there on the screen. Um, I'd just give a quick explanation of what the Hornby Award scheme is. Um, the point of the awards is to support uh, original research into areas of lexicography and dictionary use, um, broadly within the field of English language education, and specifically research that um, aims to produce clear practical benefits for learners of English. Uh, the Hornby Awards are given annually, uh, up to a maximum of £15,000, um, and there will be a new call for applications uh, early next year, uh, around the end of January, early February, that sort of time. So do look out for information on the Hornby Trust site if you're interested, and, and the call will go out on various discussion lists as well. Um, so on to today's presentations. Uh, the format is this, that we have, um, we will hear um, from our three award winners first, uh, and then there'll be some time at the end of the session for uh, questions and answers. And, and they have each prepared an eight minute uh, video. Um, and our first presenter is Priya Matthew in the top right hand corner. Um, Dr. Matthew designs and implements programs in English for academic purposes and English for specific purposes uh, in the Sultanate of Oman uh, in collaboration with subject field teachers. She runs a writing center uh, and she's investigating the use of language uh, in content courses in order to improve support for student writing. Uh, her research interests include um, corpus linguistics and genre-based pedagogy. Um, the project she's been developing uh, with Hornby support is aimed at developing a bilingual uh, corpus-based app uh, with a specialized dictionary of physics. Uh, and it's geared towards her undergraduates in Oman whose first language is Arabic. So um, I'm going to go straight over to you, um, Priya. Um, can we can we start the uh, thing? Thank you. So this is Priya's uh, recording, and here it goes. Yeah, sorry, Priya, we're just waiting for some sound. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it looks like it's here. 
you can see pictures of our campus and our students. Higher education institutions are affiliated to annual universities and studenting our project on creating a bilingual on today i'm presenting our project on creating a bilingual corpus-based physics dictionary app the target users are l1 arabic undergraduate students enrolled on electronics programs this project is funded by the hornby trust i'm priya matthew and these are my team members from oman and the university of edinburgh the research site is Middle East College, located in the Sultanate of Oman in the Arabian Gulf. In this slide, you can see pictures of our campus and our students. The majority of our students come from public schools, where the medium of assessment and instruction is Arabic. However, almost all of our higher education institutions are affiliated to Anglophone universities and students must meet the English language requirements of their disciplinary courses. Most students go through a one-year foundation program before they enroll on their undergraduate courses to improve their language skills. But then they continue to struggle with the English language requirements of their courses. I've already spoken about the language problems that our students encounter. They find the technical vocabulary difficult to understand. New concepts are introduced in English. And as a consequence, their academic performance is affected. The aim of this project is to support such students by creating a dictionary app specifically for students enrolled in electronics programs. Rather than aiming to include many entries in the dictionary, the aim of this project is to refine the methodology, focusing on a few headwords, creating the entries, collecting extensive feedback, and then refining these entries. The project can be broken down into several stages, starting with the identification of the topic and text, selection and retrieval of the headwords by consulting Sketch Engine, the subject teachers, and then finalizing the list. The subtopic atomic and quantum physics from the textbook used to teach the module was chosen as the text to be uploaded on the app. The next stage involves compiling a custom made corpus for this project and also identifying a suitably large billion word corpus if occurrences of the headwords in the customized corpus are few in number. The next stage is writing out the definitions and notes and translating them into Arabic. We've hired a multimedia expert to draw the diagrams where appropriate and add animations. Selecting examples from the corpus in consultation with the subject teachers constitutes the next step, followed by moderation. Creating a cross-platform app is the next stage. Then feedback is to be collected through various data collection methods, including interviews, observations, conferences, expert opinions, and analysis of student performance. The last step of the project is to refine the app on the basis of the feedback obtained. A customized web-based corpus of about 2 million words was developed for this project using the Bootcat technology available on Sketch Engine. The headwords were initially used as seed terms to compile the corpus, after which the corpus was expanded by taking suggestions from the subject teachers and Sketch Engine itself using the Make Bigger feature. We found that with certain headwords, the custom-made corpus contained more instances compared to the large general purpose corpus. However, we did find that with some headwords, there was a greater frequency in the general purpose corpus. For example, the term Thompson scattering occurred only four times in the custom made corpus, while we found 64 instances of the term in the general purpose corpus. The app is now available on Play Store for Android phone users with 20 entries. The words highlighted in blue in the first image are the head words in the dictionary. Clicking on any of the blue words take the user to another page with the definitions, examples, translation, and illustrations as shown in images two and three.
There is also a live website linked to the app, which is accessible to the project team. This allows us to make updates to the app without depending on the software developer for each update. In this video, you can see a student scrolling through the text uploaded on the app. Here's an example of a dictionary entry available on the app. The head word is scattering of photon, which is translated into Arabic, followed by a diagram of the phenomenon being described. This is followed by the definition of the term and some notes followed by the Arabic translation. It is followed by examples of the head word in complete sentences. These examples were carefully chosen to include the most common collocations of the word momentum using Sketch Engine's word sketch feature. As we were choosing the examples, the subject teacher suggested that we not include examples of collocates such as angular because students are not learning this concept at the moment. On this slide, you can see the word momentum in quick format. Some preliminary feedback from students indicate that they prefer the examples in the form of full sentences. They feel that the vocabulary is a bit difficult in the concordance lines. and They don't feel comfortable with incomplete sentences. And also, they feel overwhelmed with the amount of words in front of them. We now need to think about what other metalinguistic information needs to be added to our entries. For example, should we add pronunciation? Should we cross-reference or explain the meaning of some of the words in the definitions themselves? We also need to decide whether we should provide examples in full sentences or through concordance lines. Regarding the tasks to be completed, we need to collect extensive feedback from various stakeholders, including lexicographers, moderators, students, teachers, experts, conference audience, and so on. We need to also measure the effectiveness of the app to support the vocabulary acquisition of students through a pre and post test. The entries have to be refined, followed by moderation and publication of the app for iPhone users. The final stage would be marketing the app among our local universities and colleges. We hope that once the app has been used and proven for this specific topic and with this specific group of students, this model could have the potential to be rolled out more widely in similar Arabic speaking contexts. On behalf of the project team, I thank you all for listening. We welcome your suggestions and feedback. Thank you so much, um, Ria. That's fantastic. Um, okay. Lorna Morris, Cape Town. Um, she's a freelance uh, lexicographer researcher, and she received her PhD in lexicography in 2021 at Stellenbosch. Hello. Regent Charles School, as many of us will know. Um, the aim of Lorna's Hornby project is uh, a bilingualized, sort of standalone pocket English dictionary uh, for children in. Uh, South African schools, children aged 10 to 11, from a wide variety of backgrounds. So, so Lorna, over to you. Um, we'll get to your um, video clip. Hello. Today I'm going to talk about my project, which is research into producing an electronic school dictionary device for primary school learners. The goal of this project is to produce a bilingualized electronic school dictionary device for all 11 official South African languages and specifically for primary school learners in grades 5 to 6 who are 10 to 11 years old. South Africa has a literacy crisis. In the 2016 PEARLS study, Progress in Reading Literacy study, 
78% of grade 4 learners cannot read for meaning in any languages. The 2021 PILS results have just been released and we fared even worse. This time it showed that 81% of grade 4 learners cannot read for meaning in any language. This is against an international median of 6%. One of the reasons for this literacy crisis is that while less than 10% of South Africa's population has English as a home language, all schooling is done in English from grade four. Learners are not given enough support to learn and achieve in their second language. So what can help? A bilingualized school dictionary with more support for learners would be a great tool used to fight against this literacy crisis. However, South African schools are not ready for online dictionaries. Many schools do not have their own computers or tablets. Learners do not have their own computers or cell phones. There is often no internet access at home or school, and data is expensive and often unreliable. Our electricity supply is also unreliable. And of course, print dictionaries don't have the capacity for the kind of, this kind of support. So what is needed is a dictionary device that does not need the internet and is smaller and lighter than a book so that learners can carry it to and from school. Something that has the portability of a book with the capacity of an electronic dictionary. Pocket, portable or personal electronic dictionaries were popular in the late 1990s and early 2000s, particularly in Asia, before smartphones made them obsolete. You may recognize these devices. An updated PET would be an ideal tool to support learners who are learning in their second language. It would need a larger full color screen, a specialized dictionary, so not just a converted print dictionary, and it would need to be rechargeable. But think of it as a pocket calculator or a Kindle where the device is the dictionary. Some background. For my PhD, I designed model entries for an electronic school dictionary, providing more support for learners learning in their second language. So while I was doing that research, I didn't have a particular device or medium in mind. I know these entries are very small to read, but hopefully they can show the full color support, the thematic word banks at each sense, um, the clear sense division, and the little boxes that offer more support. The features of these entries are that they contain simple explanations rather than concise definitions. There is a translation equivalent of the head word in the learner's home language. There are full color illustrations at each sense. There are examples at each sense with a link to more examples if necessary. There's audio for the head word, the definition and example sentences so that learners can hear the, the sentences in natural and fluent language. Synonyms and opposites are offered where applicable. There's a thematic word bank at each sense. Phrases and collocations are provided. And there are usage notes, did you know boxes, word family boxes at each entry where, where useful. Um, homonym entries will contain a menu offering users the option to choose between different senses or different meanings. I wanted to take my research further and find out whether these devices would be feasible. In order to do this, I needed to increase the scope of the research. So where my PhD um, used paper entries, the ash driven uh, research will be using actual tablets so that learners can get a look and feel of an actual electronic dictionary. For my PhD, I only went to two schools in one province, and for this research, I'll be going to 25 schools in five provinces, representing seven different home languages. There will also be an increase in the number of entries. While I used seven entries 
for my PhD's research, I'll be using 30 entries and they'll also include adverbs, prepositions and conjunctions and slightly more complex entries. I've experimented with different ways of presenting the entries and while there's great prototyping software out there, I found that using PowerPoint is actually the best as it will not need the internet and a slideshow can be loaded onto each device used in the learner tests. The users will be able to navigate through some hyperlinks, browse the entries and access the audio. In this entry we can show, see how the audio works. To look at something very carefully. To break something into different parts and look at each part in detail. This entry has a, an active hyperlink to more examples, but that's not working in this presentation. So I will just take you to the pop-up that would show if you were to click on the more examples button. So next steps. I'm completing, I'm busy completing the learner questionnaires. The, the entries have all been designed and developed. They're busy with a, um, a recording artist who's recording the audio. Then I will take them with the dictionary entries loaded in packs per language. I'll take them into primary schools. Field work will include five provinces in South Africa, testing the dictionaries with seven different home languages. The final stage will be processing and analyzing the data. If this research shows positive feedback from learners and teachers, the next step would be to present it to the education department and get actual devices developed and a whole dictionary made. My belief is that learners who get more language support from their school dictionaries will be able to make better progress at the school, which will allow them to improve their prospects after school. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Lorna. Um, and our last presenter today is Tomai uh, Dal Panagiotti, who's from Greece. Um, Tomai holds an MA and a PhD in lexicography from the National and Capodistrian University of Athens. She's currently affiliated with the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, uh, the Hellenic Open University, and the University of Nicosia. She teaches linguistics and research methodology courses to undergraduate and postgraduate students. Uh, her research interests are in the areas of cognitive linguistics, corpus linguistics, lexicography, and vocabulary acquisition. Her project is titled, uh, as you can see, Integrating Frame Semantic Resources into EFL Instruction. Uh, and the goal of it is to enhance language learners' uh, metaphoric awareness and competence. Hello, I'm Samai Talpanayoti and I'm going to present my project which is carried out at Aristotle University of Thessaloniki in Greece. It is about using frame semantic resources to enhance CFL learners' metaphoric competence. Before I start, I would like to thank Pompey Trust for funding this project and the organizers of the LEX for allowing me to share my work. The aim of the project is to put a frame-inspired, task-based approach to metaphor teaching into practice in an EFL classroom. Since this approach makes use of FrameNet and MetaNet, we investigate how these lexicographic resources, which go beyond the scope of conventional dictionaries, can be integrated into EFL teaching and be of practical use to EFL learners. In this presentation, I will briefly refer to the theoretical background of the study, the setting of implementation, the methodology of research and preliminary findings. The teaching approach under investigation brings together frame semantics and task-based language teaching with a view to offering a comprehensive framework for developing l 2 lens metaphoric competence capturing the linguistic, conceptual, and communicative dimension of metaphor. 
Both Graham Semantics and Task-Based Language Teaching offer usage-based perspectives on language and language learning. On the one hand, Graham Semantics is built on the idea that the meanings of words should be interpreted against common backgrounds of knowledge, named semantic frames. And this is the point where lexicography comes into the picture, since frame semantic insights become accessible and usable through online resources like FrameNet and MetaNet. FrameNet describes frames and shows how frame elements are realized in corpus-derived sentences, while MetaNet views metaphors as mappings between semantic frames. On the other hand, task-based language teaching relies on a sense of language use and meaning-based communicative tasks. It is considered a strong form of communicative language teaching and has various versions determined by the focus of incidental uh, or intentional um, learning and the teacher's and student's role. We use the framework that incorporates both incidental and explicit learning processes and organizes the lesson in three phases, pre-task, task cycle, and language focus. In theory, this integrated approach is expected to raise learner's awareness of not only the form and meaning of metaphors, but also, most importantly, their use in discourse. Therefore, we have set out to examine whether this expectation is met in practice by developing teaching materials and considering learners' actual productions. The proposed approach is implemented at the School of English Language and Literature in Aris at the University of Thessaloniki. The participants in the study are first-year students attending a compulsory course called Language Mastery. The course aims to develop students' EFL skills through a focus on the descriptive and narrative genre. For the purposes of the course, students are divided into small groups of about 25 participants and continuous assessment is employed, including writing short descriptive or narrative texts on a weekly basis and two essays. Previous teaching experience in this course has shown that although metaphors run through the reading materials, students' use of metaphors in their own productions is limited. Motivated by this observation, I designed learning materials based on the proposed approach and used them with one language mastery group. Here is a procedure followed in order to pilot the proposed approach and gather information about its effectiveness. Five frame-inspired task-based lesson plans were first designed and then actually used during the previous winter semester. Three types of data collection tools were used. First, students' texts produced during the main task of each lesson. Second, students' essays produced at the end of the course. And third, focus group interviews. The analysis of learners' productions shows how their metaphoric competence in L2 writing has developed, while the focus group interviews reveal their attitudes, opinions, suggestions regarding the teaching approach and the use of frame semantic resources in particular. This is a sample teaching unit that gives you an idea of how frame semantic insights are channeled into the different stages of the task-based lessons. On the whole, the pre-task introduces learners to the topic of the lesson by guiding them to activate specific frames. During the task cycle, learners are actively involved in the frames through exposure to and use of the, the L2 in a communicative situation. And in the language focus phase, learners' attention is drawn to the linguistic realization of frames and the conceptual metaphor involved. We thus move from implicit to explicit use of FrameNet and MetaNet, and from incidental to intentional learning. Here is a sample from the students' texts produced through group work in the task cycle of the specific lesson. Color is used to differentiate among the types of metaphor and to visualize patterns of metaphor use. This is an example of an extended metaphor, which seems to be deliberately used from creating a humorous effect and giving internal coherence to the description.
By applying metaphor identification procedures to the student's texts produced in each pilot lesson, we observe how the amount, type, and function of metaphor use vary across the lessons. What is important is not simply the quantity of metaphor produced, but that there is a gradual qualitative shift from non-deliberate, isolated figurative instances to deliberate extended metaphor created to better serve the communicative purpose of the text. Metaphor is thus used as a conceptual and discursive framework for their writing. It remains to be seen whether the analysis of students' exam essays will give similar results. Lastly, the follow-up focus groups gave us an overall positive feedback about the frame-inspired task-based lessons. With regard to frame and metaness, here I quote some students sharing their experience and pointing out the usefulness of the resources to them. However, disadvantages were also reported and mainly concerned difficulties in navigation and limited content. Therefore, students' suggestions include creating a simplified learning-friendly interface, adding more content, linking frame semantic resources with conventional dictionaries, and giving them the opportunity to add their own entries. These are some of my references. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Tomai. And I, I think you agree that there's a really fantastic range of um, projects which the uh, Hornby Awards are supporting. So we've got five or ten minutes left in which uh, we can ask questions of our presenters. So if you have a question, could you start by saying um, which of the three um, award winners uh, you're addressing it to? So um, I'm ready to take questions now. Wendy, yeah. Um, I think you might need the microphone so that other people can. Oh, you should come up here. Okay. I think Wendy has to come up here so that the. Oh. Um, no, so I think you can hear me, right? No, no, no. But oh, okay. So they that uh, you. Sorry. Yeah. all the people out there, the thousands of people who are watching virtually, can also see you and, and hear you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're waiting my bit. Okay. It is complicated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for Lorna, um, it's sort of three in one. Uh, how many head words are you aiming for having in your dictionary? Um, are you um, getting them from any particular source? And uh, are you starting from scratch in terms of uh, identifying um, the, the content, it's uh, writing the content itself? So the head word list itself from a particular source and any content itself, just give yourself a head start towards completing the project. Uh, Lorna, you need to turn up your mic. There we go. How's that? Got it. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for the questions. Um, so the, the actual contents of the dictionary will be from scratch. Um, so far, I've done, I've got about 35 my research, but um, in terms of the, the planned dictionary, they will be from scratch. Um, and I haven't really thought that far ahead um, I'll possibly take um take word from the textbook um and yeah I haven't thought beyond beyond okay um there are questions for ideally for all the other two Well, Priya, I have a question for you. Um, can you hear me? Priya? Are you, 
you can can you hear me yeah i can now okay good uh, well yeah my my question was really whether you had also discussed with any of your colleagues in the university about developing similar resources for um, students working in other subject areas yes i i actually showed the app to teachers from for example, uh, business studies department, they have this uh, program in logistics. So they are very, very interested in uh, developing a similar app for students taking logistics because there are lots of technical terms in logistics, for example. So I think this would be the start of something you know, that can be applied across many fields. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any more questions? Well, in that case, I would just like to invite you to, well, first of all, say that uh, keep an eye on the Hornby Trust website for next year's call for applications. We're very, all very keen to get applications for the next uh, set of prizes. And um, uh, could you all just uh, express your um, appreciation once again for our three uh, presenters? Thank you all very much. Um, great.